Hey there, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to show you how to air test a 700R4 fully assembled case without the use of a test plate. Now, I like to use test plates because frankly they're convenient, but they're not always readily accessible or available to purchase. And at the same token, for those that are only going to rebuild one or at most two or three or tiny handful of transmissions, they may or may not be worth it for you to buy. So, testing without the plate is very straightforward with these units. So, for 700R4s, you have two different styles. You have your auxiliary valve body style, which is what we have here, and you can readily identify an auxiliary valve body case by the presence of this little dam at this location here um, in the area of the auxiliary valve body itself. And then, of course, you have your non-auxiliary valve body cases. So non-auxiliary is 82 to 86, auxiliary valve body 87 on onward through end of production. So I have all the test locations labeled. And all you're going to need to do this is, well, obviously shop air, an air uh, gun with a nozzle on it, like you see here. And then you're also going to want to have a little piece of vacuum hose. Okay, I'm not sure what this is. I think it's like either 3 8 or um, half inch or something like that. But uh, I'll put it in the, in the notes. But basically, you're going to test the following locations. Okay, your forward clutch is going to be here for auxiliary valve body. Non-auxiliary valve body transmissions, you're going to test forward clutch right here. This little square cutout is for your boost valve circuit. Over here is going to be your 3-4. And then this is going to be reverse input. And then this is out the cooler. For your servo, second gear is going to be at this location right here. And fourth gear is going to be right here. This is where you want to test for the fourth gear apply. Your 3-4 accumulator. You're going to actually put air right down in there. And I may do that, I may not. I mean, this will pop out if so. But if you had um, a plate on here, you could test that here, and that will test the accumulator movement in the, you know, in the bore there. Low reverse is going to be right here. And then these are out to the governor. I have the governor installed. And when you test the governor, all you're looking to see is uh, the weights move. Okay. All right, so let's begin. So we'll start with forward, and what we want to hear is positive apply followed by release. Ideally, we want to also have air trapped in the circuit uh, when we release the trigger, but before we pull the uh, nozzle away. So I'm using 100 PSI, 75 to 100 PSI is my recommended uh, air pressure when uh, testing a case. If you're just testing a clutch by itself on the bench in a drum or through the pump, 50 PSI is sufficient. Okay, the air you are hearing is coming out of the back of the nozzle. Okay, so I'm charging the circuit, releasing the trigger, and then releasing the nozzle. I know it's hard to hear, and I mean, there's just too much air coming out the back, but I think you get the idea. So the boost circuit, I'm going to see if I can get a good seal. What I do with the boost valve is I'll take a finger and press down on it, compress it a little bit, and then I'll put air. And what I want to feel is that boost valve forcing upward, you know, pushing my finger upward. So that tells me that when the boost circuit is charged, it's going to uh, respond as it needs to. And that's what's happening here. I know you can't see it, but that's what you're feeling for. If nothing's happening, then I'd be a little concerned. Okay, now for your 3-4 and your uh, reverse input, you're going to want to add your uh, little, little strip of uh, vacuum hose so that you can get up in here to these test ports. Okay, so here's 3-4. All right, again, not a perfect seal, but you can clearly hear the 3-4 clutch apply and release, and that's what you want to hear. Reverse input. Okay, again, even less than an ideal seal, but we still hear that clutch applying and releasing like we should. All right, now we'll go ahead and test 
the servo, so we'll start with second gear. And you can put your hand here on the band to feel it move. So it's applying and releasing. Okay, do the best you can. Sometimes you're just not going to have a perfect seal. Um, this thing's also a little beat up and it was cut wrong anyway, so I'm going to have more air leaking out of there than usual, assuming that uh, you, you know, do a better job cutting up your length of vacuum hose than I did. Okay, fourth gear. So we'll charge it. And then release. Releasing the trigger, then releasing the nozzle. Hey, that was so much air, just forced it out. All right, so good positive apply all around. So now we'll test the coast clutch. And when we do that, we need to plug the forward apply feed. Okay, so that's good. Again, the usual amount of hissing, owing to the fact that I'm not able to generate a perfect seal. Okay, last we'll go ahead and do low reverse. Now, unlike these other circuits, which are all bounded and retained by sealing rings, the low reverse circuit uses machine cut square seals, meaning that right out the gate you should have a, basically a perfect or near perfect seal. If you detect any form of hissing other than obvious air whooshing out of the back of the uh, rubber tip, then I would be concerned about that to the extent I'd go back in and double check. So get a good firm grip. I don't know what the hell I was doing. Good firm grip. Releasing the trigger. Now releasing the nozzle. Okay. With Teflon sealing rings, you're always going to have a little bit of leakage. So if you're testing it on the bench with, say, uh, a center support and a direct drum on like a 4L80E or a 204R, you're always going to have a little cross leakage with Teflon sealing rings. Air is going to be able to get into places where fluid simply cannot go. Plus, you're testing it at room temperature as opposed to operating temperature. So no fluid is present. I mean, you can put a little transmission fluid on the seals if you want or the sealing rings, but it's not going to make a difference. All right. But when it comes to machine cut rubber seals, like what we have here and what we have here, um, you should not have any leakage. In fact, I'll retest fourth gear. No leakage. No leakage until I started to pull this away. And this tip, like I said, is no good. All right, that is a 100% perfect seal on that um, on that servo. All right, I'm gonna very, very lightly charge the accumulator circuit here for fourth gear, very lightly, so you can kind of see the piston move. if I can manage to get the nozzle on it. Oop. And that's what I did not want to do. Um, if you have to get one of these out, that's how you do it. So I'll double check. Appears to be okay. Okay. All right. So that is how you air check a 700R4 without um, an air test plate in your possession. So here's the air test plate that I use. I purchased it off eBay. 
I get a vast majority of my specialized tools off of eBay. Um, they're sellers, uh, you know, by the literally thousands, if not tens of thousands, that specialize in selling specialty dealership transmission tools or other types of transmission or driveline tools or whatever. Um, engine tools, like any kind of tool you can think of, chances are um, it'll be available on eBay if you keep looking. Okay, that's the video. Hope it was helpful for you. If you have a 4L60E, um, pretty much the exact same principles are going to apply. So, <clears throat> you know, you could follow the same procedures and pattern of testing. Uh, the circuits are going to be in the same general area uh, for the 4L60E as they are for the 700R4. Case architecture is largely the same. Um, it's really the differences of valve body plate uh, case for the uh, you know large case connector given it's an electronically controlled transmission uh, and there is no governor all right thanks again i really appreciate all your help and support uh, and all your views if you haven't subscribed already please do so i'm constantly doing these transmissions so i'm always going to be putting out content so if this is a subject matter that interests you if these transmissions uh, are such that you want to learn more about them um, go ahead and please subscribe and click the uh, bell icon so you can get notified whenever i put out a video on the 700 r4 thank you again look forward to seeing you on the next one